I'm making an independently created animated series, and I'm well on my way to being done with the pilot. Come with me on the journey, and maybe, just maybe, there's a surprise in store. November 6, 2015. This is actually how footage looked back then. We've, we've come such a long way. I put up a video on my very new YouTube channel of a character that I was calling uh, Port the Support. It, it actually got a lot worse before it got better. This was a little curmudgeonly field medic for a traveling adventurer party. The story started out based on a feeling. The feeling that all of us might get from time to time of being overstrained and underappreciated. The idea was to focus the story not on a hero that took all the glory, but the support that might go unnoticed. I revisited this character a few times. His name actually changed to Gorth, but for a thankfully brief time, it was supposed to be ugly sounding. I was trying to make him uglier. He became a character made of a healing goo, like a health pack you might get in a video game. This means that to help others, he's literally depleting himself. Several designs and a merciful name change later, and we got Biko, an over-encumbered, under-appreciated healer. But that's just like one character and a story prompt. How does that become an animated series? Well, come on, guys. You don't know? All it takes is some, some good old-fashioned... I mean, this, this is common knowledge. A few years ago, again on this channel, I decided to flesh out the rest of Biko's cast, and as a character designer, this is some of the most fun for me. I have to say, those weeks designing these characters, stumbling a bit at first with Glangor's design, seeing how excited everyone got as the cast came together, is one of the highlights of my time making videos here. But you can't design these characters without knowing what they're for, and as I was going through this exercise, I realized that our traveling party wasn't just wandering idly, they're diffusing and taking down a rampaging threat to their island home, giant, monstrous storms. The entire island lives in fear of these storms, and builds their villages on the outskirts to try and avoid them. It's such a problem that a guild is formed to recruit teams of Stormfellers. From a story perspective, each of the members of Biko's team are a problem, a foil, a nuisance, even a direct antagonist to him when we start out. These guys do not appreciate or really respect their new healer, despite him doing his best. There's Glangor, the big beefy tank with the personality of a giant needy baby. He's on the front lines distracting and interfering with the storms. Then there's Quilver, an abrasive and cutting marksman who shoots quills coated with different chemical compounds to weaken storms with status effects. And finally there's Aetius, a ruthless perfectionist storm conduit. He's there draining the storms into the equipment on his shoulders. He holds himself and the rest of his team to an incredibly high standard and won't settle for less. I talked more about the specific designs of these characters back in those initial videos, but they ended up not only fulfilling the visual preference that I had for their design, but the personality and story requirements too. Now as far as the process for writing an animated pilot goes, it didn't make sense to just start writing page one of the script, and that's because you want to figure out where this is going, both the external and internal things the characters are dealing with. With a pilot, you have a lot of ground to cover. You want to establish the world your characters are in, who the characters are, what sort of stakes there are for both of those things, the tone of the series, and a reason why the audience should keep watching, all while making the pilot itself interesting and entertaining to watch self-contained. That's kind of the difference between a short film and a pilot. A short film is like a short story, and a pilot is like chapter one of an entire novel. That means you, as the creator, need to know essentially the rest of the novel, at least to a certain degree. Now, I don't have any footage of me writing on Stormfellers, but I do have some artifacts, like this crazy person's scrawling, mapping everything out, blurred, of course, for spoilers. I got a ton of help from my co-writer, Tay, who, as you already know, is an incredibly skilled writer who helped me make something beyond just what I would care existed, but other people would as well. A lot of stories start with lots of exposition, explaining the story, or setting up an origin, and I opted instead for the pilot to take place at a beginning of sorts, but already thrown into the thick of these characters' lives, and balancing it out so that through context you understand what's happening without someone stopping and explaining things 
that other characters around them already know. I found it helpful, especially with dialogue, to actually act it out and see how natural it sounds, and then edit from there. Give me back those Totino's pizza rolls, Quilver. Give me back those Totino's pizza rolls, Quilver. That, that was it, we got it. With a script established, I could finally start storyboarding. Storyboards are not beautiful, painstakingly drawn illustrations that encapsulate everything in the scene. They just need to show enough detail to describe the narrative. I do wish that for posterity I had these storyboards printed out on the wall on a big gray board, like a nice feature production, but it's just, it's just PNGs in a folder. Oftentimes they're drawn super fast so that you can get through the idea of the scene. It's a little like a comic, except all the panels are the same size, and you're thinking about motion and timing. There are a lot of different solutions for storyboarding, but I opted to use the animation tools in Procreate so that I could just start a new layer and create the next panel or board. Medic! Medic! Get an overheal on Glangor, Medic! Keep our man standing! Glangoron Stoppable! So no, I will not be the voice of Aetius in the pilot, but once the storyboard is done, it's time to assemble that into an animatic, which means that I recorded scratch audio for all of the characters first myself. What'll it be, Medic? Now speaking of voice actors, you're probably wondering who is voicing these characters. Well, while I am incredibly excited to eventually reveal the cast, I am going to hold off on them for now, save for one. I'm happy to reveal that the role of Quilver will be played by himself. Big stuff, people. Big stuff. I'm actually immensely grateful to the talented cast who's supporting Stormfellers. It's killing me not to share it in this episode, but I have to keep a few surprises to myself for now. And that reminds me, a lot of this episode is a bit of a recap for folks that have been following along with my videos uh, over the last few years, as a lot of this pre-production has been public. But that brings me to the first surprise. This is honestly something I've been dreaming of forever, and now he exists. Uh, and along with supporting the making of Stormfellers, you can have a field medic of your very own. I work together with uh, Makeship on this, and actually, they do have a team of very talented folks over there who offer to adapt your designs for you, but I took it upon myself to be very particular and get all the details right by drafting up the design for Biko myself. Uh, he's got all of his, you know, his little healing canisters there. His, his backpack there is actually removable. He can take it off, you know. He, he's just like us. He puts his backpack on one strap at a time. This is a limited time campaign that will only go into production if we get enough support over the next 21 days, and then they won't be available again. So head over to Makeship in the description below and grab yourself your very own Biko plush. He's actually coming with me to our booth at Lightbox Expo next week. So there have been times in the past where I've almost made something animated, but then I made a comic instead. This time though, I'm doing it. Truly, it's been so exciting to be making this series, but of course, like anything, it's kind of scary. I'm putting a lot of eggs into this basket, pulling on experience working on other animation for companies, of course, uh, lots of additional learning and applications like Blender, but I'm so grateful that there's already so many of you excited to see the final product, and I can't wait to share it with you, and I hope that my process can be inspiring for those of you that want to make something like this yourself. Next time on The Making of Stormfellers, we'll dive deeper into adapting the look and world of Stormfellers, as well as how these 2D designs turn into the 3D character rigs used in the series. But before you go, I'm gonna put out a little signal to you folks. As you know, this is an independent production and I'm doing most of the work myself, but I am looking for help, some paid help, in the following positions. Composing and scoring, sound effects, judging by those two things you know, I'm just not a sound guy by any means, uh, Blender Animators. This is character animation, not unlike feature animation. I'm doing most of this myself already, but it would be awesome to offload a couple of shots. Bonus points if you have experience rigging as well, which just makes some things easier. And lastly, this one isn't really related to the pilot, but what the heck. Tabletop role-playing game designers. <laughs> If you or someone you know is interested in helping with any of these things, send an email with a link to your work to the address on screen. These are all paid positions, the way that animation has been lately, the way that whole shows can be not only canceled but deleted by big companies. I'm really trying uh, my best to build something indie, something fresh, and to expand it where I can. 
I've got a silly little animation coming next week for you. I'll be at Lightbox Expo splitting a table with Ergo Josh as well next week. New Biko's backpack on Patreon that looks like this, where you can directly support the creation of Stormfellers and get your name in the credits. And remember to go grab a Biko plush before it's too late. If you want to see the Stormfellers videos that came before this, check out this playlist.